Last year, Apple introduced their first new desktop product in a long time. It was the Mac Studio, and it is Apple Silicon's greatest triumph. A powerful desktop that is literally just a thick Mac mini. That's all it is, and it's so freaking good. And when it came out last March, we all kind of thought that it was just a holdover while we wait for the new Mac Pro. But with the Mac Pro basically just being a larger Mac Studio with some PCI slots, well, this is basically the best of the best. And I'm not gonna lie, M2 Ultra kind of blew my mind, given the fact that the M2 chip was a fairly underwhelming upgrade as it has scaled up through the M2 Pro, Max, and now the Ultra, this thing is a screamer, literally. Yeah, I don't really know what that's all about. Uh, it definitely sounded like coil wine. I only heard it one time when I was doing some back-to-back -back Cinebench runs and I was like, what is that weird noise I hear? What is that melody? Turns out it was my heat sink. But the good news is I haven't heard it since. There is a widespread issue with the M2 Ultra chip and the Mac Studio. And that is that I simply cannot imagine why you would need to spend 3,000 more dollars to get this same thing in a giant tower case with a bunch of PCI slots. We're setting a very high bar here. And to pay for that bar, I'm gonna need a word from today's video sponsor. Greetings, fellow Americans. It is I, the president of th this YouTube channel. And I come to you today not from the Oval Office, but from 4Movie, the makers of the world's first and only Dolby Vision equipped 4K ultra short throw projector. This thing is seriously impressive with ALPD 4.0 RGB plus laser technology for ultra bright vivid colors and Dolby Vision support. It's Android 11 TV certified with Chromecast and Google Assistant built in, plus with three HDMI ports, two USB, optical audio and 3.5 millimeter line out and ethernet, it has all the connectivity you could ever need. Seriously, the picture quality on this thing is absolutely bonkers, especially when you consider that it is an ultra short throw projector that's just inches from the wall. Ah! It's like they're really in the room. It also comes packed with Bowers and Wilkins speakers that are dedicated to producing premium sound quality with Dolby Atmos support. This thing is like a projector and a sound bar all in one. It legitimately sounds really good. Lately, I've been watching the new Apple TV Plus show Shrinking, and even with my studio lights on, it looks phenomenal on this huge screen. This thing is absolutely bonkers, so if you want to learn more, check out the link in the description below. Again, a huge thanks to 4Movie for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. That was a smooth transition. You gotta give me that one. But let's talk about the M2 Ultra chip, because last year while I fell in love with the Mac Studio, I didn't necessarily fall in love with the M1 Ultra chip. And sure, it was very, very fast, but it didn't feel like you were getting that much more performance compared to the M1 Max. In fact, when I was doing my Final Cut Pro testing, it was basically identical. That was a little disappointing, because I'm a, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a Final Cut Pro guy. But this year, Apple seems to have made some big changes. I don't know how they've done it, because as far as I can tell, the M2 generation is just a slightly tweaked M1, and they threw some more cores at it. So I don't know how they managed to get their Cinebench scores looking like this. 24,050 on the M1 Ultra, 28,730 on the M2 Ultra. How'd they do that? They went from 20 cores to 24 cores, but those four extra cores are efficiency. How is it that big of a jump in performance? And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that they just ran the cores a little faster and it's gonna run the machine hotter. Well, the good news is it doesn't. The Mac Studio is Apple's thermal triumph. I don't know if that's an award they were going for, but they got it because this thing can basically sit at idle fan speeds while maxing out 24 CPU cores and it doesn't even break 80 degrees Celsius. Old Intel Macs were sitting at 80 degrees Celsius on the desktop with nothing running. So we're running these cores faster, getting more performance, but it's not having an impact on thermal performance. And it's therefore no surprise that when you fire up Blender on the CPU, you're gonna lose 30 seconds off the time compared to the M1 Ultra and more than two minutes 
compared to the M2 Max. That's a pretty big jump and it scales almost perfectly with the increase in the core count. So that's really good to see. And you'll notice that effective scaling when you fire up some GPU tests. In GFX Bench Aztec high tier off screen, we jump from 259 FPS on the M1 Ultra all the way up to 332. Look at that graph. Look how well it scales with core count. That's pretty cool. But things got a little bit weird in the more recent Manhattan 3.1 off-screen test. This one showed the M2 Max actually outperforming the M1 Ultra. That's pretty crazy. Now, of course, the M2 Ultra outscores everything, but not by a huge margin. And that might be the first time that we've seen the M2 Max outperforming the 64-core M1 Ultra, but it certainly won't be the last. I fired up 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, and sure enough, yet again, the the M2 Max is faster than the M1 Ultra, but whoa, look at the M2 Ultra. It's twice as fast as the M2 Max. That's near perfect GPU scaling, folks. And you have to remember, the M2 Ultra is two M2 Maxes glued together, and they managed to do that with barely any impact to the scaling in, in optimized applications. How did they do this? Now that's pretty incredible, not just from a technological perspective, but a value perspective. Last year when I reviewed the 48 versus the 64 core M1 Ultra, I found that those extra cores didn't really give you all that much. But this year, you can see, I mean, M2 Max is half the score of the M2 Ultra. It shows up in a bunch of different optimized applications. We'll go back to Blender, for example, and in the classroom GPU test, we're going from 49 seconds on the M2 Max to 22 seconds on the M2 Ultra. And again, the M2 Max is only five seconds off the $5,000 M1 Ultra from last year. Same thing in the BMW test. The M2 Max and the M1 Ultra are tied, and the M2 Ultra is half the time, 22 seconds down to 11. Again, that's near perfect GPU scaling. Truly incredible. But there are a few caveats that I think we should mention at this point. Number one is Blender itself. Rendering with Metal has become a lot faster since Apple Silicon launched, but it's still nowhere near what you can do with an NVIDIA GPU rendering with optics. In the classroom GPU test, an RTX 4090 chops our 22 seconds down to seven, with even the last gen 3090 being more than twice as fast. And we see the exact same thing in the BMW test, 11 seconds down to three on a 4090. And the other caveat is optimization. I mentioned having Blender with Metal Acceleration or 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme GFX Bench Metal, those are all optimized to run on Apple Silicon. What if you take an older game like Rise of the Tomb Raider, that's a classic, it runs pretty well on the Mac, but at 1440p medium, we're only gaining a handful of FPS over the M2 Max. It almost seems like the game is not capable of taking advantage of all the GPU cores. So your experience may vary here. If you're using an application that is specifically optimized to run on Apple Silicon, the M2 Ultra makes a big difference. But one area that I was very curious about was video editing, because this is something that is going to lean very heavily on the hardware accelerators. And that means it's not necessarily gonna be as dramatically different as these CPU or GPU specific tasks. So I pulled up yesterday's review of the 15 inch MacBook Air on my timeline. That's a 15 minute 4K 10 bit project with a lot of titles and transitions and video layers and effects. So I deleted all my render files and I set these machines to race, which could render the fastest. And as you would expect, the M2 Max was the slowest at four minutes and 56 seconds with the M2 Ultra coming in at three minutes and 59 seconds. So it's about a minute faster than the M2 Max and 30 seconds faster than the M1 Ultra. Respectable gains, and those will become increasingly noticeable with larger projects. However, it's not proportionately faster to how much more expensive it is. You can get an M2 Max Max Studio for like 2300 bucks, but where I was really stunned was in the export test. This one absolutely took me by surprise. 12 minutes and 38 seconds to export that project on the M2 Max, 13 minutes and 56 seconds on the M1 Ultra, but then the M2 Ultra comes in. Eight minutes dead. Huh? It's nearly twice as fast as the M1 Ultra. That, that's crazy. Year over year? We've lost nearly six minutes in that export time. That is a difference that you can feel right away. 
I was like, whoa, it's already done? Dang, you guys. I was not expecting this M2 Ultra review to be a blockbuster, right? Yeah, we get some more GPU cores, a few more CPU cores, it's tweaked architecture, but it's a spec bump. It's not something that you're expecting to find two times the GPU performance and two times the export performance. Those are some kind of crazy witchcraft year over year upgrades. I don't know how they did that. It doesn't make any sense to me but I'm happy about it because that means I'm actually gonna notice a difference when I upgrade my original Mac Studio to this Mac Studio. Ah, crap, I shouldn't have said that. I was supposed to keep an open mind and pretend that I could like find a justification for the Mac Pro, but I just can't imagine spec for spec spending an extra three grand just to get like a big empty box full of PCI slots. Goodness, that's a tough bar. And we've already established that this Mac Studio has no thermal limitations whatsoever. So what would you even be gaining by going to that? It's literally just expansion. It's not gonna be faster. I haven't even got it yet, and I can tell you that it's it's not gonna be faster. Plus the Mac Studio is so cute. It's like a little guy that sits on your desk, but it's so powerful, and it has an SD card reader on the front. So yeah, that's honestly pretty great. Wow, so yeah, the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. Not an upgrade I was expecting to be impressed by, but one that I am nonetheless. Now, if you already have an M1 Ultra Mac Studio, you're probably not gonna make this upgrade. I don't think it would be worth the expense of doing that, but it does at least give you an idea of the trajectory that Apple is going on with Apple Silicon, and I'm very excited to see where they go with three nanometer. But the kind of sleeper upgrade here is that now you can buy an M2 Max Mac Studio and expect to get very similar, if not slightly better performance compared to last year's M1 Ultra. That means you could literally save thousands of dollars to get the same amount of performance. That's a major win in my book. And it's also the, and it's also a great way to end a video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned. I've got a lot more exciting content coming your way very soon. Get subscribed, leave a like down below, and I'll see you in the next one.